Hi, and thank you for joining us on our Friday webinar. Today, we are going to be with Lisa Bono. It's going to be the Gray Way episode, I believe, five. Um, keeping it clean, tips and techniques for maintaining a healthy environment for pet birds. Um, yeah, and I just, I, I think we, we're going to see if we have some, hopefully we're cross fingers if, if uh, good internet connect activity issues are solved. So let's we'll cross our fingers that we, we don't, but if we do, we'll try to get back online, but just to preface on that. Um, so Lisa, as we uh, wait for people to log in, give us a rundown again of your flock behind you, who you got? Who's, uh, okay. Here. Yes. This is Sydney. All right, hello, Sydney. This is Emma. And then let's say I'm trying to get to, that's Sam. Back here in the background, you'll see somebody moving at Sterling, and Abby is a little bit off screen. No, are you going to be feisty? She gets a little bit too feisty um, when I have the computer in here. I don't know if it's the view or the flicker, or she, she's, she's just off to the side here. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So oh. I was going to pull her in, but then she went to long. <laughs> She could she could stay right there. I have my hand tool to move her around because she gets a little feisty with the computer in here. Nice. Well, your bird room looks spectacularly like clean and healthy, and <laughs> so we're all hoping we'll have a, a similar uh, some takeaways to help so we all can provide similar to our own flocks at home. <laughs> so. Um, just a reminder, people, if you have a question, we'll do it uh, after uh, after Lisa's presentation and to use the Q&A button and not the chat feature so we can capture the question. Um, so Lisa, I think um, I think you have a screen share. Should we get started on that? Or you have a screen share for us? Sounds good. Okay. Wait a minute, what happened here? <laughs> there we go. It's, wait a minute, it's not there. Oh, there we go. Yep, we're good. Um, hold on one second. I'm yep. moving stuff around. Okay. Uh, how do I get, real quick before we start, I have the bar across the bottom where it's saying mute, stop video. How do I get rid of that? It's, you know, honestly, I, I don't see. Over, let me see if I can. It isn't show on my screen, so I think it might just be on your screen because I, I I just see your um, your slides. So I think I think we're okay. Okay, because it was covering my slides, so I hopefully moved it out of the way. Yes. Um, okay, I want to welcome everybody and thank everybody for joining in um, today. We're going to talk about a healthy environment and some tip, tip, tips and techniques you could use. Uh, possibly in your own homes to make your lives a little bit easier and your birds health a little bit better. So mess happens. Um, we all have it in our house. Uh, there's different reasons for it. I want you to notice with a lot of these pictures right here, you could see that there's a common theme and that's paper. Your grays love types of paper. Here we have Vincent down here. Um, looks like he killed something that's probably pomegranate. So not to worry. That stuff stains everything and it's very hard to get off. So what we're going to talk about, and I think is very important, is cleaning at home versus cleaning in a hospital or sanctuary setting. A lot of times I'll see people using these heavy duty disinfectants and I worry that maybe they're not doing it right or they haven't spoken to their veterinarian about it. And I've interviewed quite a few people um, that have to do the heavier cleaning. And they all agreed that there's a difference setting between the hospitals and at home. So, and I wanna note real quick, this is little Stumpy at one of the rescues, um, Eastern Avian Sanctuary, Tennessee. And they do little sponsorships if anybody's interested in looking a little stumpy up for the story. So the home setting, hot water and paper towels um, work really well. We all know that dried poop can get up, uh, be hard to get off the grates and on the side of the cages. And a lot of people buy products to physically put on there to break everything up. Um, these products aren't necessarily disinfectants. 
and really hot water, especially on stainless steel cages, works wonders. You let it sit there for just a little bit and usually comes right off. I'll do this is why the birds are out of the cage, so they're not picking on the paper. Because they'll pick it up, they'll throw it. They don't need to be doing that, and it's you know not helping me at all. So they're usually on their trees while I'm doing their cages, and usually in their cages when I'm doing their trees. So this is pretty much you know the end of the night here. You can see poop happens. So this is where I put the hot paper towel, and everybody's out. Maybe a half hour later, I'll go back, and here you go. That looks pretty clean and I need to use nothing but paper towel and water. So if I have to do a little bit of a heavier cleaning or you know, soap and water, the smaller cages, these are their sleep cages, travel cages, outside cages, they will go, you can see I took all the toys out and anything that would be bothered by getting wet is out and in my tub. Now, if I have to sanitize something I use as Vanadine, we'll go into it a little bit more down the road. But for instance, here is Abby's um, travel cage or any cage or any, I say travel cage that I take the birds to the doctors in. This way, this can be sanitized um, a lot easier than say a material type carrier. So that's when I'll break out the Vanadine and make sure that you know it's disinfected. So poop off is uh, a product that a lot of people use. Um, I sold it in my store, but it is not a disinfectant or a bactericide. So this is really um, to get bird poop off the cage, the tree stand, anything like that. Um, it's a safer product and it's doing sort of the same thing. If you feel better using this than paper towel and hot water, have at it. Next is going to be Mango Pet Focus. A lot of people use this as well. And while I'm not overly familiar with the product because I have not used it, I did reach out to the company and they were very um, responsive with sending me a brochure and they could, they could do the same thing for you. Um, you can use it on cages, rugs, floors, counters, everything that has a non-porous surface. And with anything, you're going to see me say this time and time again, especially as we get into the heavier things, always make sure you rinse it off. I don't really care what the directions say. I always rinse everything off. So because of the EPA, they've changed some of the claims, the pathogens um, on, the, on what they used to do because rules and laws and all that stuff is always changing. So keep that in mind. This is the brochure that they sent me via email. Okay, it tells you everything that it does. Um, I bought, actually, I've sold this in the store as well. And if you want, you can reach out to them. Mango Pet Products, they'll send you this. You can make up your mind on your own. It's a little bit too much to go over uh, you know, all at once. So grapefruit seed contract, GSC. This has been a long, around a long time, and this is a pretty safe thing to use, you know, on your, your cages, your, your wood, your perches. Um, you want to let it stand for a little while before rinsing. Again, you do need to rinse. You can add it um, to your own soap to make it an antibacterial. Um, with any of these products, it's not a cure-all for everything. So when you're talking about stuff like Pseudomonas, GSE is not going to help. So, you know, it's that people will use it on sprouts. I honestly have never sprouted, so, but I do know quite a few people and this is what they will use. Now, if you're going to do sprouting or something like that, I highly suggest you talk to somebody who does it all the time, find out the proper way to use it. And again, make sure it's rinsed. Steam cleaning, this is actually a little steam cleaner I have. Uh, it works really well if you have one or two birds. For me, I'm cleaning 11 cages daily. So between their bird room, their day room, and their night room, and this doesn't really seem to save time for me, but for somebody who has one or two cages, you know, this might be a lifesaver. 
and an extreme heat from the hot water will kill bacteria on contact. There's no chemicals. And again, because of the steam, the bird should be removed from the cage prior to use. Actually, any of these products really should be. Uh, the bird should be moved. Okay, this is power washing. This happens to me, my trees out on the deck. So again, you'll see the toys that are on there or the ropes that are on there. Those can safely get wet. So just to do these trees, I have six trees that are out there. There's a little one hanging around somewhere. We probably can't see it. Um, it's going to take me a full day to get the toys off, to move the, per the cages out, I mean the, the trees out, power wash them, and let them dry. Sun is wonderful for killing a lot of things. I'll usually sit out there to make sure another bird doesn't land on it. Um, but that's a wonderful option if you are able. This is the uh, power washer that I use. I think it was about a hundred bucks. It's not as loud as my husband's larger unit. This is a plug-in and I can pretty much do it anytime. What most people don't realize is soap and hot water are gonna be the best and safest uh, for cage hygiene and general cleaning. If you're putting the items outside, the direct sun will also act as a natural disinfectant. Many organisms are susceptible to sunlight, the ultraviolet light, and the heat. Now, vinegar, I know a lot of people use this as well, but it is not a germicide from what I understand and have been reading. Um, this is going on my own thoughts and research. It might not always be matching up with somebody else because they might know a little bit more about it. I have not used vinegar on a cage. Um, it can be irritating to the respiratory tract and skin. So you want to make sure that everything, again, is washed off. It, um, vinegar contains, yeah, acid. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that for people to read. Acid, which is a natural disinfectant. It kills bacteria around the cages, on the food bowls, waters, and on the toys. Um, but bacteria like Staphylococcus are not going to be affected by vinegar. So if you're going to use a vinegar, use apple cider vinegar. I know some people use that in their bowls or white vinegar only and dilute properly. Now, as far as home versus the hospital and sanctuary use, if I stutter a little bit, it's because the top half of my screen is covered by some big bar with all these tools on it. Always discuss your specific cleaning needs with your veterinarian. I don't want anyone thinking or saying the things that I talked about, any products in this webinar, is completely safe in your home situation. You and your vet are the ones who are gonna decide what to use. Now we're gonna get into some of the heavier things. Vanadine, I mentioned this before. Um, this is what I use. It's harder to find now. It's harder to get here. Lucky for me, I bought this humongous container years ago and the color stays stable as long as the product is good. So I'm going to have to start looking around a little bit more for it and see where we can get it. But the reason I opted for this is I had an old time breeder friend and this is what they used in their watering systems because it was safe if you did not get 100% of the product off with your rinsing. Unlike bleach or you know the F10 or anything like that, that you have to be so careful for, this just made me feel better knowing that if I miss some little crack, I'm not gonna cause problems. Now, what they used to do in the beef and the cattle industry is they used to put this in the automatic watering systems and they would eat, actually ingest it. But again, under the rules and regulations, iodine is no, no longer supported for use as a disinfectant in drinking water. Now this product comes from overseas and I'm not sure who is importing it. These are some of the reasons I decided to use it. You can see over here, the ones in red are some of the things that we have to be careful with and down here, we have aspergillus, which unfortunately I've had two bouts with. So this is what always stuck in my mind that was going to help me due to my experiences. For, um, for need, the need for a stricter 
disinfecting process is going to be much different as at rescue sanctuary stores and office uh, bed offices. Um, the group mentioned, the products mentioned, and the people that helped me are professionals and know the dilution rates and know what's needed to be safe. Again, if you need a specific cleaning routine, speak to your vet first. Don't go on, on the advice of somebody on the net. Not me, not anybody. You may, you may end up hurting, yes, hurting your bird, and you want to make sure that whatever issues you have, you're using the correct product alongside your vet to help you. Now, these are some of the products that have been mentioned to me in a hospital setting. I know a couple people that use this as, at home as well. I'm a little cautious and I would advise to speak to your vet. All of these must be diluted and rinsed thoroughly. F10 is a non-toxic and non-corrosive product. People like it for the cages for that reason. Um, it, it has a broad, broad spectrum of bacteria, fungus, and molds that it's killed by. Um, it can be used on hard surfaces, equipment, and air spaces, but it must be diluted and rinsed thoroughly. Now we have bleach. I think I've only used bleach once, and it was on a Java treat, that one of them that's behind me. Um, and I was very nervous afterwards about letting my bird be on it. So this actually comes from a vet. This is a quote from a vet on their page. You can see more at the VCA. And it specifically says, discuss with your vet. And many disinfect disinfectants, including bleach, need to be used with great care and may release toxic fumes. They need to be used with proper ventilation and the bird should not be present in the room while they're being used. This is a direct quote off their page. The consensus with almost everybody I spoke to, and there's quite a few people that didn't wanna really go on the webinar here and I respected their privacy, um, but they all said the best would be in your home setting is gonna be good husbandry and good old soap and water should be used with our flocks at home unless there is an issue. So these are some of my friends that said I could quote and Again, these are, these are either vet techs or veterinarians, and they're saying the same thing. Um, one will, the vet tech will use rescue at home, but she has, she feeds her dog a raw diet. So she needs to make sure she doesn't have a um, contamination of E. coli. So that's why she uses it. But the other vets I spoke to said it's a very different scenario than a home environment. So they think it's good to use um, mostly soap and water. And you can see by what I've quoted with them, they're doing the same. Now, these are some of the rescues I spoke to. And they have um, different things they have to worry about if a bird surrender, or they're having people come in um, that may have birds at home uh, and then don't want them cross-contaminating their, their birds, if they have, um, you know, a, a place for them to meet while they're being adopted. So there's a lot of different things that go into them and you can see, and especially talking with the many vets that I did, they take great care to make sure that your birds are taken care of and safe when you go to an emergency room or a hospital. Tips for daily cleaning. These, some of these things are Rather simple, but will help you move along rather quickly. Now you can see this is Sydney. He's eating his dinner. And the big takeaway here is he's on his tree. He's not eating in his cage. Same thing. Here's Miss Anna with her dinner. Uh, oh. So instead of feeding him in the cage where you can get it on the walls, you can get it on the cage bars, you can get it in the grates, it makes a big mess. So I like to say, use a feeding station. Now you can simply put it on a counter and put some paper towels down like I have Emma there. You can use one of the products that is shown there. However, know that if his bowl is off to the side, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for them to reach. So one of the best options, 
table, countertop, you know, let them eat there if you're able to, because you know what, then you can sanitize your tabletop and you don't have to worry about that deep cleaning with the cage because you didn't get any of this mush in here. And if you remember one of the pictures I showed in the beginning with the pomegranate, it, takes, it makes a huge mess. <laughs> Layering papers. Now, everybody thinks that my house is always spotless. It is not, but I'm not gonna take pictures and show you that. <laughs> so you can see, what I do here is I layer the paper, as you can kind of tell in the middle picture on the bottom of the Java tree, the papers aren't exactly smooth. But if you take papers and layer seven of them in there, every day you take one out. And then at the end of that seven days, you know it's that weekly time where you do a little bit heavier deep cleaning. This takes seconds a day. This is another direct quote or page from the BCA. And I've noticed a lot of people using different products when they're lining their cages. The best thing you could use is going to be unprinted newspaper or the U-Haul packing paper. You can get it at Staples. You can get it anywhere. You can get it on Amazon. So you have something like this that comes in different sizes. You put your seven layers in there. You can take it out every night. As you're taking it out, you notice that the poop doesn't look right, if there's seeds that are undigested. There's a lot more things you can tell by the poop. And if you're using, you know, like some sort of corn bedding or shell bedding or puppy pads, it's more expensive. You can't monitor the poop and that's really important to do. So, and again, these things are gonna be more expensive than what we're using. I'm not really sure the thought behind the puppy pads in the cages, because from what I understand, there's chemicals in there. And while people say that you, they cannot reach it or whatever else, believe me, it's a bird. It will do what it wants to do when it wants to do. And if it includes reaching down somehow to grab that, they will. I have seen Emma physically lay on the grate with a breastbone through two bars and dangle her feet down on the bottom to get her paper to come up. So they will do it. So it's important to make sure you watch that. Make sure you're using clean and fresh water dishes each day. Don't leave the food sitting in there for days and change the water when they need it. You know, if you're walking by, change the water. Um, you don't want them to get sick from it. And again, it takes seconds a day. Spot clean, like I showed you in the picture before. This would include the bars or the perches, depending on what they got a hold of. If they got a hold of some kind of fruit that they dumped, that's a sticky mess. So you can do that as well. And let it sit, let it soften, wipe it off. Now, again, these birds will find a way to circumvent what we want them to do. For instance, you got a tree here, you got places to sit, and where do they sit? They always sit where they poop. Um, um, so you can see on the bottom branches there, I have paper towel, because I know that's where she's gonna poop. It's gonna be easier for me to change that paper towel than take that tree out and wash it. So you wanna make sure you place paper, even if it's on the floor, outside the tray of your Java tree or whatever you have, because your bird's gonna hang its butt off the very edge and let it go. So if you already know that, put something down, then at the end of the night, pick it up and you're, you're saving a lot of cleaning right there. Might not look pretty, but it works. Organization works really well. So the first picture, um, it's gonna be on the left. That is my bird room closet. So if they need another bowl or I need paper towels to wipe something up in passing, they're right there. The, Picture to the right is gonna be their sleep room where I have everything else they could possibly need. And if I need something, I know exactly where to go to get it. Vacuuming and sweeping. I do this every day, uh, um, sometimes twice a day. In fact, I have to go still vacuum their sleep room. Um, you can get the little microfiber dust thing here. It works really well, the mop. And I also use that when I'm cleaning. Um, washing their floor or wiping up their messes. Um, and then this little magic blue here, it's a wonderful little machine. I have probably had this since 2014. 
and it is so beat up, but still so perfect. And that helps me every day with my routine. The suction on that thing is fantastic. So it's by Kenmore. You have to get them secondhand now because they're no, no longer made, but they are available. And it's a great little product. You can put a cage skirt on the cages. This is very helpful with smaller birds that have smaller, lighter seeds and they flap their wings and everything goes everywhere. It should not be as high as this picture on the left. And that's why I put the picture in there because this is completely inappropriate. Um, however, the picture on the right, that is Emma's old cage in one of, one of my homes. Um, and I made this little cage skirt for her right here. They're very simple to make. If you get a balloon balance, the old balloon balances, and you just stick some elastic through the top and the bottom, and you sew that end shut, there you go, you got a cage skirt. You can use plexiglass on the back or the side if you need to protect something, not both. I see people encasing their cages and you need ventilation in there for the health of the bird. Um, and you can see this is actually my Ollie's cage. And I, had, I went to Home Depot and bought a piece of plexiglass because his poop is very watery and it gets all over everything. And that's more known to be like lorikeets and kayaks because of their diet. Um, so I had my husband drill some holes in there and you can see I attached it with a uh, zip tie. And when that cage gets rolled off, Outside, I just snip the zip tie, take that off, plexiglass goes in the tub, wash that off, cages get power washed outside and put back on before he goes next to the wall. Now, these are some of the ideas from people on my pages. And so they're, they're actually very good. So Squaw's idea was to find a little wallboard sheet and she cut it to size and hung it up with Velcro scripts to the wall behind the cage. Um, it, it also serves as if the, is the bird's too close, he'll chew on that versus the actual wall. Just be aware with the um, strips like that, I've had them pull the paint off my walls so, and actually pieces of sheetrock as well. So just be careful with what you're using. Mary Beth also had a great idea with she got a bigger tray and she puts that on the bottom um, and that helps her keep the rungs of the, of the grates a little bit cleaner and she's able to just pick it up and get it out to clean it off. One thing that helps a lot with the environment is going to be the air purification. So you know from having a grayer, a cockatoo or a cockatiel, they're extremely dusty. And having a good air purification system is important because it traps a lot of that stuff that's going to be settling on your window sills and everything else in sight um, out of your environment. It keeps them healthier and cleaner. I have actually two running in my day room at all times, a little overkill, but I also have lung issues. And then I have one in their sleep room and they run 24 seven. I should have put a picture on here to show you everything that they capture, but I can send it to anybody who's interested. Take the opportunity when your bird is taking a bath, if they go to a little bird bath on the floor, or they, they catch them in their water dishes. That's a great time to take advantage of, you know, wiping the floor up. I use my little microfiber mop and that's when I'll pick everything up and get, you know, if there's anything stuck on the floor. Again, this is in passing. Um, we just did this the other day. So this is for the weekly cleaning. You know, my guys, if you do, if you do the baths two times a week, do it two times a week. It takes a lot less time if you spread it out than if you try to do it all at once. So your weekly routine should consist of washing the grates, the trays, the cracks, the crevices, the rungs, and everything else that it rests on. Uh, easiest way is bathtub, like I showed you the picture. They can be scrubbed with soap and water to clean, hot water to 
rinse dry well. Go over the cage bars and wipe down clean perches, which can harbor bacteria, and let them air dry before putting them back in. The same for toys. You cannot wash or really clean anything that is going to be the palm leaves or any kind of shredders. Uh, if they get soiled, either cut the piece off or just replace them. And you can you can use the, what uh, a dry washcloth to kind of you know dust them off, but don't keep them in there too long. If they're not playing with them. It means they're not interested. Just move them along. Now, ivory soap is something that I use for my soap and water washings. Um, when I do the floors, I will put a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of ivory soap, and water, and that's the bucket that I use. And I saw this picture online uh, from the Helping Wing Parrot Rescue when I was chatting with her. And look at those gorgeous floors there. And I asked her what she had in there, and she had soap and water. So, you know, when they take their baths, go in there and do it. It's, 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 a, it's a great idea. You got to clean it up anyway. So you have, for your weekly cleaning, you have your plastic scrapers. If you get one that has a little silicone on top, it's easier to hold. Or you want, you want to make sure you get plastic because you don't want to scrape the paint off. A handheld brush so your, your hand doesn't slip off while you're scrubbing. I prefer the one that you can wrap your hand in and around because I've broken many nails on just a scrub brush. So when you're working with soap and water, anything can happen. Microfiber dust. Um, I have one of these and I'll go over the entire cage with. So it really depends. If you know your bird's afraid of red, don't get the red. Try to go for a more neutral color. You may have to do it, you know, when they're out for the night. But again, this, this will attract a lot of the dust. Um, it's not going to get off, you know, stuck on fruit or anything like this, but dust is also a big issue with the dustier species. So that is something inexpensive that will help. They even have uh, a mitt type one, but because my, the cages are usually bigger, it's harder to get to the back with that. So again, we're going back to the VCA. Um, it says dust, dirt, and fecal matter, bits of food, and feather dander accumulate constantly on the cage. And it should be washed down at least once a week. And if you're using a disinfectant to let it sit for 15 minutes on the surface being cleaned, then it is essential to make sure that you rinse it. Um, food, food dishes and water dishes should be the same. They should be washed every day. You, I use either soap and vanadine or I use the dishwasher. So it's really whatever you feel is comfortable. I have enough dishes to have one set in the dishwasher and one set in their cages and one set in the counter. So again, they're saying uh, thorough brushing followed by a fresh water rinse is essential after using any kind of soap or disinfectant. Now, when I'm power washing the cages or, or the trees outside, I do not use a soap because it's harder to get soap off with cold water. So if they're in the tub, if you have one cage, if you have you know, a walk-in shower or something like that, it's a lot easier to get the cages in there. Unfortunately, in this house, I don't really have that option. So most of my stuff goes outside. That's why we designed the burn room and the deck the way we did. So this is for monthly cleanings. What you want to do is power wash if you're in a, a warm climate. If not, remove all the dishes, toys, great. Everything that you can to get the cage apart and to wash and rinse every inch of the cage. On a hard, um, have a hard scrub brush or plastic scraper or a washcloth you can throw out. Um, when I'm doing my dishes and stuff, I'll use paper towels. I won't use a sponge. I'll use a clean paper towel for each one and throw them out. This way there's no cross contamination and I'm just using soap and water. Uh, wash your floors, your walls, your drapery. Um, dust from these guys gets everywhere and if you're not cleaning the environment, you're not doing a thorough job. Now, again, with the amount of birds I have, I'm lucky enough that I have um, 
a young man in the neighborhood that comes and helps me out when I have to do the major cage washing, um, power washing and tree washing because while he's out there doing a the majority of that, I'm in here wiping down the wall. done, everything's dry, they're ready to come in, they have a clean room. Um, it's also a great time then to vacuum your air cleaners. Make sure everything is dry before you return the birds to the cages or, or on the play stands. It's not good for them to be sitting on something that's wet, especially in the colder months and not at night. So proper husbandry and maintaining a clean environment is essential for you and your parents' health. So hopefully you've learned a few tips and tricks to, you know, they'll take you a few minutes a day to help you and make sure you always reserve a, a day on your calendar for the heavy cleaning. Proper maintenance and cleaning routine can add years to the life of your bird. Doing it properly can add precious time that you and your bird can spend together doing other things. Now this is their night room. So you can see I have six cages in there. There's three along this wall. And this is their day room. So there's a lot of cleaning going on here. And hopefully um, you've learned a few things to help you along the way. Okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah, so Lisa, you, you, the last time you showed it had, had carpet. So uh, I, I believe some people, uh, uh, when you have like a carpet that your, your cage is sitting on in a carpeted room, um, the, the office mats that you can, do you have people that do that where they, 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 they buy them from like an office depot and then they have them protect the carpet yeah, a little you, bit? You can do that. Um, you can also, depending on the size, the size of the cage, they have trays for like washing machines um, at Home Depot. I was surprised. I saw them there when I was there a couple weeks ago and I knew not what they were for, but what we could use them for. So you can do that. You can get plexiglass. Um, there's things you can do. Uh, you know, and then again, because my guys aren't in there all the time, it's just for sleep. They're not in there throwing their food or hanging their butts off of things. So it's easier for me to clean, you know, in that environment. Gotcha. And what about um, like a Roomba? <laughs> Does anyone, you know, use a Roomba in their bird's room? You know, like the little automated like, circular vacuum that you can pre-program? Yep. I would love one. I would love one. Um, I've been kind of hinting to my husband for years that I want to get one. He's nervous that he's going to hear the Roomba hitting on the cages all night long because hitting the legs because I have more than one cage. Yeah. Um, but if you have a bigger area and you can program that, Roomba, that's fantastic. Maybe you kind of so, maybe kind of uh, do an increment so your bird isn't like totally freaked out by this moving object. <laughs> kind of acclimate them to the, you know, remote. Right. The Roomba. They probably would be. They probably would be. But my, I have a girlfriend who just got hers, and she's got on the brain, and they're not bothered at all by it. Oh, excellent. Excellent. And then uh, just another thing. So some people I know use grates and some people do not use grapes in the bottom of the grates on the bottom of the cage. Um, I guess it, I mean, it might depend on how much, if the bird likes to spend time on the bottom of the cage, uh, maybe not have a grate. Do, what are your thoughts on grates? And I mean, obviously it makes it easier to clean when you're not scrubbing a grate, but they do serve a purpose too. So. Correct. Well, it, yeah, it's, I have the grates in mind. I do have one cage, it's Sydney's cage, um, because he has um, more ur urates in his poop. So I wanna make sure that I'm watching um, how he's going. I'll have his above the grate because when he goes, it kind of stains everything and you're not getting that off. So it, it ate paint off his last cage, it stained the stainless steel. So I'll put paper on top of that but he doesn't go down to the bottom. As far as the other guys, I, all the grates are in there. Um, the paper is under the grates. And now one thing you have to think about is you put, if you pull the grate out, there are rungs in the cage that the grate runs on and sits in. They're very sharp. 
So and some cages have smaller, you know, smaller spots around the bottom, and some have larger spots where a bird can get out. So it's designed to have, and some of the cages actually helps hold them together. So it's designed to have the grate in there. It's healthier for the bird not to be roaming around in his poop. Um, it's just really not healthy. And then it's, you know, like I said, it could be dangerous with the sharpness on the, the rails. Okay, good point. Um, so we have a question from uh, Lori. Um, she says, how about newspaper for the bottom of the cage? Can you just use like newspaper you subscribe to or get in the mail? You can. I used that for years. And then the little company I was getting it from, the little local guy, went out of business. So I didn't have any. So I switched to the U-Haul. Know that the unprinted newspaper is it's relatively cheap. You can get it for like 10 bucks for like 240 sheets. So you <laughs> You know, it's probably cheaper than newspaper, and you have a better view of what's coming out of them. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and then Kathleen wants to know, what is the best way to clean the ropes? So rope toys, you know, rope branches or perches. Yeah, the, the little boings and stuff like that. Um, a lot of times I've heard people put them in the washing machine. I think that would be rather not noisy. Yeah. Um, some have soaked them in the sink and, you know, got it all that way. I power wash mine because you can see my guys have ropes on theirs. So I make sure they're in an area where they can't poop on it. And then when everything gets power washed, it, they get power washed as well. Okay. Maybe the dishwasher instead of the washing machine because it'd be less. <laughs> it's dishwasher safe. Um, and then uh, I think my husband would probably not be saw something in there like that. That's true. Yeah, yeah it is the gross factor. Okay, good point. Good point. Um, so we had a question. I uh, sorry from Balagurik. I place newspaper on top of the grate and change the paper frequently. That way, the grate does not get soiled. Um, Scarlet does not walk on the grate. Usually, is this okay? And they want to know also if newspaper yes. is safe. So there's two parts in that question. Well, from what I understand, the black and white, even the colored prints um, is considered safe now. I guess they figured people are going to let their kids chew on it, so they're using friendly ink. Um, I'm, I'm old school, so, you know, I always go back to, you know, if there could be a problem with it, why bother, you know. But, yeah, having the newspaper in there is perfectly fine. Changing it several times a day if your bird's not going down there, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Um, and then Bonnie um, says, uh, it says not play the stupid card. I use more than one cage in gym in the kitchen. I wash the dishes daily. No poop left on the grate, so I haven't been washing daily. Frankly, didn't do a monthly. Never knew this and healthy cockatiel for 25 years. Why wash everything down daily if no poop on grating or sides of cage? Um, again, no judgment, please. Uh, Dick, she takes very, very good care of her guy. So, what's? Do I know why? Why wash daily? Not anything to wash. Right. If there's nothing to wash, then I wish mine were like that at the end of the night. Um, so that that's great. Wash and do as you need. Um, you might, you know, if you have a clean bird, if you have a bird that's always out on a tree or a place to stand. The play standard tree might need to be washed more than the cage. So, you know, each each thing is individual and that's that's fantastic that you have a tidy little guy. <laughs> All right. Um, and then Adam wants to how do how do you stop um, rodents from visiting the cage at night? Any tips and tricks for that? That's that's not fun to have around your cage. So no, it's not. One of the houses I lived in was actually a log cabin in the middle of the woods. Uh, we had a lot of rodents coming in with that. Um, a lot. Unfortunately, we had to put traps out and there would be nights where we would have, you know, eight or 12 of them that we caught. Um, you know, you had field mice and wood, wood rats and everything else and they come in between the logs. So, um, you know, for something like that, you 
You have to really take into consideration what you need to do. Don't use poisons because that's not going to be good for the outside animals when the animals run and die. Um, if you want to relocate, um, you know, if you need to have a, some sort of trap out. Um, my fear was a mouse or, or a rat getting a hold of one of my birds. And at that time, I had cockatiels and Amazons and one gray. Um, so you had littler legs, littler toes for these pests to get a hold of. Um, I have had ants, sugar ants, I think. Um, I think that's what they call them. Um, and I'm not in the bird's womb, but I've used them in other rooms. I've used the little ant baits, and that usually gets rid of them within like a day. And then I remove the bait. Okay. I imagine for rodents being mostly nocturnal when they kind of creep around your house is just to be diligent about maybe not leaving food in your bird's cage or even um, the, you know, the, the fallout on the cage bottom for them to scurry for just to, you know, unfortunately, but just to keep, keep on top of offering them any kind of crumbs or, um, or food of any kind during the evening, right? Or during the nighttime, right? Stop the rodents from sniffing around the cage there. Yeah, it's very difficult, especially... Yes, it's very difficult, especially when I had, I had 17 cockatiels. So you had something scurrying around on the floor in the room, scared one, I had 17 of them thrashing around. I don't think I slept the whole night from the age of 18 to, I don't know, probably 45 because of night fright and setting one off, whether it was the bug they saw or thunder boom or, um, Luckily, I have not had any kind of varmint issues since I got out of that log cabin. Okay, okay. Uh, and now we have a question from Cassandra about water dishes. Um, she wants to know, uh, should water dishes be washed with soap every time the water is changed? Um, she currently does this every evening, but wonder if it's necessary. Um, so it's a lot of work for four birds. Um, so you said to change it whenever you walk by um, and think about it. Is it pointless if it is changed without uh, washing with soap? Like, do you need to use soap and soap, soapy water to clean out your water dish every time? Or is it the frequency of changes? Um, if you're doing it frequent enough, you could probably just rinse it out. Um, you know, if you see the there's fruit or something in there and it's stuck on it, obviously, yeah, but if it's just, you know, well, they dropped the seed in it, you know, or they dropped the pellet in it in passing, then, you know, I usually, it's usually it's not stuck to anything. It's usually floating around in the middle of it. So I'll rinse it out and I'll put new water in. Kind of imagine it'd be like, you know, everyone but, carries their personal water bottles with them nowadays. Okay. When you go out, you bring, you know, water. I imagine it'd be kind of similar at maintenance on how you do your own water bottle. Um, Right. Okay. I'll walk through several times a day and I'll walk them through their cages and I'm specifically looking at their water bowls. Gotcha. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So uh, if you could, Lisa, if you could uh, talk about the paper um, a little bit more, um, like where, where you can buy it from. Is it online, you said, I think earlier? The paper that you buy or, and recommend? Yes, there's... there's there's a lot of different places you can get it from. Staples, Home Depot, um, U-Haul, Amazon. Uh, you're just looking for unprinted newspaper or wrapping paper that you would wrap dishes in. Um, you don't want anything like Christmas wrapping paper. You just want the plain unprinted paper. And you'll be going buying it all up now so I can't get it when I go online. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I buy it all up. <laughs> and you're like, oh no. Um, and then uh, Alisa, real quick. So just to, to reiterate, would you say that using um, the hot water with the paper towel is probably the only thing you should use while your bird's actually in the cage when you're cleaning it, when you're spot cleaning it, as opposed to, you know, sprays and disinfectants? You probably want to remove your bird to a different area. sure that the birds are out even when I'm using just hot water and paper towel because I try to make it as hot as I can and the birds will go over and they'll pick it up and they'll throw it so I'll go you know I could go in there 10 minutes later and it's on the floor it's not doing what I need it to do okay. so if you you know move them to a different spot it, it's just it's just easier it's just easier okay um and then uh, Victoria wanted to know what your opinion of water bottles is that's a great question 
a lot of some people treat you know use water bottles for the birds. Correct. I never have. I'm not a fan of them because I know that the little ball inside can get stuck. I've heard that, and owners were not aware of it being stuck, and their birds have passed away because they couldn't get water. Um, or there's supposed to be a constant, set, steady, slow, slow drip out of it. Um, and if it's dripping into, say, another type of bedding, you can cause mold. Um, you know, it's harder to disinfect. Um, I'm, I'm just not really a fan. I know some people have, have done wonderfully with it, but it, it just, it's not really an option for, for my guys. Okay. Do you have a preference for stainless? Well, one thing I okay. want to touch on. Say that again. Oh, I was just wondering if you had a preference for stainless steel bolts um, versus okay. ceramic. Well, stainless steel, you can clean with higher heat. The ceramic ones break a lot. So they usually have to be replaced. Plastic isn't as good. Um, it's harder to clean and they yellow over time. Um, the stainless steel, you can just, you know, put it, put it in a dishwasher if you wanted to and put it on the highest setting and let it go. So that's, that's what I've opted for. I know other, other ceramic ones that I've used have just broken when I've done that. One thing I did want to touch on real quickly is cage size. And I say this a lot online and I know a lot of people will not agree. And everybody says the, the biggest cage is the best. No coming from a retail store owner. There are some big cages out there. And when you're trying do your, your cleaning, your monthly cleaning, your whatever cleaning, there are some cages that are just too big to get out of door. So if you go buy this monstrosity of a cage um, and your bird is already out, you know, 12 hours a day, um, you have to take that cage apart every single time to clean it properly. And I find people don't do that. So, you know, I usually, like my guys are gonna be in a 36 by 24 cage. I'm getting older. I have some health issues. So I can't imagine getting up on top of a ladder in five years to have to take a cage apart. So I would like people to keep that in mind. Yes, the biggest you can both manage is the best, but just keep in mind when you're buying those monstrosity of a cage that I, I bought one that was easily eight feet tall in my store and I had to put it together with a ladder and then nobody wanted to buy it because we had to take it apart with a ladder, uh, getting a ladder to take it apart to get it out. And, and she was putting out on the porch that she could roll right outside, which was good. But in a normal house setting, you, you're not going to maintain it the way it should be maintained. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Good point. Um, and it looks like, uh, let's do we have a question from Dragon and asks, is there something you can add to drinking water bowl in the hot summer to inhibit sliminess, like, uh, such as grape, grapefruit, um, extract? I've heard people using the GSE and I've heard some people using, um, apple cider vinegar, I believe it is. That's something that you probably want to speak to your vet about before you know you go putting any of that kind of stuff in. They might be pro, they might be against it. Um, if it does get slimy, they usually don't get slimy that quickly. So I would say just change it a little bit more during the day. Okay. Okay. Um, and let's see. Okay. Uh, you know, and I uh, sorry, I just saw a comment. Uh, Sheila made a good comment about uh, concern about cage size. Is going back to that. Um, uh, she buys cages where she can remove the sea guards to get them out the door quickly in case of a fire or other other hazard that you might need to, you know, get those things outside and away from where they are. So it's a good point too. Um, and let's see, I think, I think people, that people, sorry. People usually don't think about that when, when they're purchasing because they automatically have it in their mind. Biggest, biggest, biggest is best. Um, 
but I, like I said, being in business for 12, 13 years now, I just know that the it's too hard to maintain some of these monstrosities and they're not being taken care of properly. Okay, gotcha. Um, let's see, I think that's all we have time for today. I am going to um, announce our, our winner of our giveaway. Uh, we do a giveaway on Fridays um, on our webinars. And uh, also, um, uh, just a sneak peek of uh, what's coming up next Friday. Um, we are going to be, we have a, a special webinar with um, uh, Dr. Jorg Meyer. Um, he's uh, he's going to be doing our, our series on the uh, University Bet Insider, Teaching, Treating, and Research. Um, this will be one you want to tune into as well. I mean, he's, he's a pretty entertaining, um, uh, he gives us a, a nice, um, informative, yet entertaining perspective on what it's like uh, to work in veterinary medicine, especially avian veterinary medicine. So you want to tune in next Friday, uh, October 8th. And I can't believe it's October already. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. Um, so Lisa, um, thank you for sharing all those good, uh, those good tips with us. I mean, it's, it's always a, you know, a challenge when you have a, you know, a, a flock in the house to keep your, your sanity and keeping up on, um, keeping your environment and your bird's environment clean. So it kind of goes hand to hand. You guys share, you know, we often share the same room with our birds. So it's, it's always good to find these little safe ways to keep everyone healthy and happy and clean um, during our lives together. So thank you for that. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, so we'll, uh, let's see, I'm going to announce our winner. Sorry. Right. Oh, I was going to say, if anybody has any questions and they want to reach out to me to, to go over, you know, if I went through it pretty quick, if they have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Okay. And also, I just want to remind people, too, that um, you can catch uh, this webinar on our YouTube channel, uh, the Fever's YouTube channel, with so you can see the slides with all the, the detailed information that Lisa provided, um, as well as all of our past webinars. So um, go check that out. Um, all of our past webinars are on there, including, and this one will be on there um, shortly. And uh, Lisa, we look forward to another um, another uh, informative and necessary gray way um, webinar with you coming up uh, next time. So, all right, you guys, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna announce our winner, and I'm gonna play uh, the the this this month's product spotlight from the Fever. And the today's winner is Sher uh, Sharon M. Congratulations! Um, you'll have a package of this. Uh, Villa Fever Bob will, will contact you to send out a package of this. And um, also another package of your um, Lefebvre food of your bird's choice. So let me do a screen share and let's see if I can get this playing properly. And I will, this will, this will take us out for this week. fun and nutritious way for your bird to enjoy popcorn. Um, you know, when you guys have movie night with your bird, you can give your bird his own uh, serving of delicious popcorn and you can have your human friendly popcorn. So. All right, everybody. Everyone have a fun, safe weekend and all the best to you and your flock. Until next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Lisa. Thank you so much.